Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. So before I get into the government's involvement with quantum computing, I want to mention this update first, because INQ just hit another big milestone, and this one's a legit world record. They've officially achieved algorithmic qubit 64, which is currently the highest recorded for any commercial quantum computer. And just to be clear, algorithmic qubit is a metric that's INQ's internal benchmark for how many qubits their system can effectively use to run real-world quantum algorithms, meaning this is a measure of actual usable performance. And the jump to algorithmic qubit 64 is massive. In fact, in June of 2023, INQ had an algorithmic qubit 29 for their Forte system. Now, what makes this so exciting, at least to me, is that this is about making it practically useful. Every step closer to a higher algorithmic qubit means more real-world problem solving. And yes, this also means INQ is widening the gap from other companies in the trapped ion space. And what's really cool here is that their approach seems to be working, given that they're iterating extremely fast. So fast, in fact, that the government has seemed to take notice. The Trump administration is reportedly in talks with several quantum computing firms to take equity stakes in exchange for federal funding. And yes, the companies mentioned include IonQ, Rigetti Computing, and D-Wave, among others. And according to some reports, each company involved is seeking a minimum funding of $10 million from Washington in these equity deals. Here's why this is interesting. To take an equity position in a frontier tech firm obviously means that the government wants ownership. And I think the reason should be obvious. Aside from money, of course, this administration has made it extremely clear that they're prioritizing technology and innovation growth. Now, just to be clear here, no deal has been publicly confirmed as of the time of recording this video. But of course, that could change after this video comes out. So just for some more context, a US Commerce Department official said that the department is not currently negotiating with any of the companies. So this still remains speculative. But from an investor's perspective though, there are two big takeaways here. One, if INQ or any of these firms do lock in a government equity stake deal, that's a very different capital model than typical venture capital or startup funding, because you're bringing in the government as a shareholder. And two, this has the potential to mean deeper regulatory scrutiny, longer timelines, but also potentially easier access to funding, contracts, and defense pathways. Now, for INQ specifically, it means that this company is increasingly operating in the zone where technology meets national strategy. So if you're bullish on quantum computing infrastructure like I am, that's exactly the kind of risk reward vector you want to watch. But you also have to remember, government ownership can also equal strategic risk as well, which could dampen some of the upside if commercialization gets slowed by policy or oversight. But I will say, given that the Trump administration has been extremely lax when it comes to regulations in the tech industry, removing all of the red tape could potentially mean a quicker pathway to success, which I think is most likely going to be the case here. So if you want to dig deeper into what this could mean for INQ, watch this video next, as it showcases just how global and influential INQ is becoming. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.